Before we get into the issues that we're facing today, which I know is like such a big topic and there's so much to talk about, I just want to touch on the sex trafficking yeah. issue because that's something that, you know, has come up so much. And that is something that a lot of people, when they hear about, you know, these anti-sex trafficking organizations, they think, well, of course, yeah. I want to get behind that. Like, we don't want sex tra- We don't yeah. want people forced into sex, which... We also don't want, <laughs> but the problem is, is that, like you said, it's a lot of these faith-based organizations whose ultimate goal it is, is to eradicate sex work in all of its forms, whether it be in-person full-service sex work or porn on the internet, hide behind this anti-sex trafficking agenda because that sounds like something that everybody can get behind. Yes. So can you talk a little bit more about like how prevalent is sex trafficking actually? You know, I actually don't know the numbers, but we've we've talked about it in terms of our industry, right? There's almost none, right? Like in terms of what we're doing is we're looking at, um, you know, model releases, right? We're working, if you're working on a fan site, a fan site is making sure that the money is going into your account, not somebody else's, right? They're making sure as best as possible that people are consenting and they're agreeing into it. There And there are very few cases related to trafficking related to our industry, right? You think about we're an industry that makes millions of pieces of content a a year, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, even a month, right? I was if you look say at like, a day? A day, right? Like there's <laughs> tons hour? of stuff. So it's a very, very minuscule percent. I think that what where we get with the the anti-trafficking groups, and, and like you said, we all agree, right? Nobody wants trafficking. You know who doesn't want trafficking? Sex workers, right? They want, like, they're the ones that are on the front lines, right? They're the ones that are most vulnerable to this, right? They're the ones that are going to be affected by this if they are, you know, if if we allow coercion or, or you know, force or fraud or, 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 or things like that. So they have a vested interest in this more than some faith-based organization. They're the ones that really should lead on this. Um, most of these organizations that call themselves anti-trafficking don't believe that any sex work um, is valid, right? They don't believe, they believe that all sex work is trafficking um, because as they say, well, there's money involved. How can you consent when there is money involved? As if the work that we do is, you know, can be non-consensual because you're getting paid, um, you know, or, or you're being coerced because you're being paid and maybe you need to make rent. But that's not the same as McDonald's where, you know, people are freely going to McDonald's to work because they don't, they love it, not because they need to pay bills, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Like when nobody looks at a McDonald's cashier and it's like, that's labor trafficking because you've got to pay rent. So <laughs> you're not consenting to be in front of this register, yeah. right? It's, it's just this different thing. And so I think that you're right, right? When you hear anti-trafficking, people think, oh, I'm a good sit too. So are we. But these people are doing it in bad faith, right? A lot of the groups that are pushing the anti-porn legislation, for instance, rebranded themselves as anti-trafficking, you know, around the time of sesta Fosta because it was more palatable to, to legislators and to press than, you know, morality or anti-porn type language. Right, right, exactly. I mean, didn't morality and media rebrand themselves as, uh, oh my gosh, what National is Center on Sexual Exploitation. Yeah, and COSI. Right. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And their website is endtrafficking.org. Yes. Right? The other thing that really kills me about the sex trafficking argument is that, you know, so often it's, you know, it points towards women, right? Because yeah. it's, it's, it's almost always like the women are the victims. And for me, that's infuriating because, I see it as this very sexist view where you automatically assume that like women have no agency over their choices and they are not sexual beings and they couldn't actually decide to take on this career because they actually enjoy sex and they see a way to monetize a thing that they love. So it's like this whole idea that like women are, should not be sexual. They are not sexual. They cannot make, you know, sound choices. It's always like, there's always a man behind that that's pushing them into it. And like, that makes me so mad. It's this old (laughs) Victorian, it's this old Victorian idea. And I I spend a lot of time in these fever spumps, right? Like one of the things that FSC gets to do, right? Is that I get to go to weird conferences, right? Mm -hmm. Where these people are speaking and I get to sit in on webinars and I read all of their blog posts and listen to podcasts and and things like that. And at the, the root of it, are two things. One, a woman possibly wouldn't possibly do that, right? Mm-hmm. Like because they think of themselves, right? I'm a good Christian woman. There's the only way that I would ever 
have oral sex on film would be if I was being forced. Like no woman wants to do that. Mm -hmm. No woman likes to do that. They're like, even if, if they say they're consenting, they can't be, they must be unhappy about it because I would be unhappy. Yeah. I would feel degraded. Yeah. And so that's part of it, right? That like no one, they can't conceive that somebody might want to do this. Yeah. Um, and so in their head, they must be being forced. The other thing is this idea that by you doing it, by you creating content, by you participating in adult film, it's forcing them to do dirty sex acts, right? Their husband is going to watch this oral sex scene, and then he's going to come home and want me to do that to him. And I mean, it's a weird myth, right? But it's it's, it's that sort of like your activity is creating a situation for me. So even if you're consenting, even if you're doing it, well, I don't consent to that. And it's it's the most bonkers logic, like like thread of logic that I've ever heard, but I hear it over and over again. They're going to want me to do that disgusting stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to do it. And so the best thing that we can do is shut down all of that disgusting stuff. Because if my husband doesn't see that, then he'll never come home and expect me to perform oral sex on him. Right. And, you know, our industry talks about consent constantly. So we're in support. If you don't want to... to perform oral sex on your husband, we don't want you to have to do it. Right. But we want to give you the language to say no, and we want to give your husband the education to understand you can't force someone to do that, or you can't pressure someone, or, you know, you know, theoretically, you could go to a sex worker, yeah. um, you know, and actually do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think also, too, I mean, not to get caught up in, in all of this, because I know, like, again, we have so much more to talk about, but the, this idea of just the basic shame around sexuality, right? And like the the fact that men who watch porn are in some way like cheating on their wives, which is like also insane to me. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, masturbation is bad and self-pleasure is bad. And it, you know, creates addiction and it corrupts, you know, the family unit and, and all of these myths that are um, really, you know, just uh, incredibly damaging for the yeah. industry. And for people, right? Like, I think that there's so much shame around sex and sexuality, um, you know, and, and our desire. And, like, that's what leads to sex crimes, right? That's what yeah. leads to, you know, a lot of the stuff that's actually bad that's happening. And our industry is actually, you know, one of the, the people who are talking about these things. We're talking about consent. We're talking about different sexuality. We're talking about genders, right? We're at the forefront of this. And I think that that often makes us a lightning rod. Yeah, absolutely. I'll never forget. I had Dr. David Lay on um, way back and I asked him about like, you know, why he decided to get into, um, you know, the psychology um, with with sex work. And he said that before he used to always believe that, you know, swingers, there was some kind of disconnect there. There was some kind of mental issue there. And then he found that when he actually would would work with them, that they had better communication than like the traditional married couple. And he said that that really started to change the way that he thought about it. And I have found that to be true that, you know, my parents were swingers and the the communication and like the level of trust too is, is often stronger in those cases because you kind of have to have those conversations if you're having sex with other people and you have to talk about boundaries and you have to talk about, you know, your wants and desires. Whereas the traditional married couple, I think often it just comes with these assumptions that we're going to be together forever. We're only going to have sex with each other. We're only going to do missionary, you know, once every six months to have a child or whatever. And then there's no room to talk about what one may want to try yeah. or what one may feel like they're lacking and then they turn to something else in shame, in secrecy, and then it comes out and then the other person's angry, but they never felt that they had the option to talk about what they wanted. And I hear this from a lot of men that I talk to, like a lot of listeners of the show or like fans who say, I want to, you know, I want to do these things. I want to do them with my wife, but I can't even talk to her about it, you know, and that's always like really sad for me to hear. Yeah, so. absolutely.